let's consider an example of separation of variables in spherical coordinates. So the problem is we have, uh, we want to know the temperature in a sphere. So we have some metal ball with some radius r. And the temperature on the surface of the ball is something that's already given. So let's say that the temperature on the surface of this ball of radius r is given by u at r and theta, so u is our temperature. It's one half u naught, some constant temperature, times one plus cosine of theta. You can think about what this means. Um, this means at the top, the temperature should just be u naught, while at the bottom, the temperature is actually zero. Okay, so that's the setup that we have, and in between those two points, on the surface, the temperature varies as cosine theta. So we want to know what is the steady state temperature inside the sphere. So what is the temperature, not as it depends on time, but uh, once the temperature settles down. Okay, so what is the temperature inside of this ball? So in order to study this, we need to look at the heat equation. And so if you recall, the heat equation in more than one dimension is the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to time is equal to some constant alpha times the Laplacian. And that must be equal to zero because we're interested in steady state. So the time derivative of the temperature should be zero. OK, so what we need to do is we need to study the Laplacian of our function u in spherical coordinates. OK, so let's write that down. Just looking this up, it's 1 over r squared, derivative with respect to r of r squared du dr, plus 1 over r squared sine theta, d by d theta, sine theta, du d theta, and then also 1 over r squared sine theta, sine squared theta, d squared u, d phi squared. Let's get rid of the phi term uh, by saying that we're going to assume there's no phi dependence. This is, of course, a simplification. We're only doing this because it's simpler. Um, also, our, our uh, temperature on the boundary doesn't have any phi dependence. We don't expect the temperature inside to. You can generalize this if you want to. OK, so what we need to do is we need to solve, then, this equation. So the r and theta components of the Laplacian above. We need to solve this partial differential equation subject to a set of boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions are that the temperature at little r equal to big R as a function of theta is 1 half u naught 1 plus cosine theta. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to solve a problem like this? Well, it's a problem involving a partial differential equations and boundary conditions. So very likely, we're going to use separation of variables. That's our usual tool to use in solving partial differential equations. OK, so let's see how this is going to work. Uh, first, we're going to let u of r and theta be some function r as a function of r and some function capital theta as a function of little theta. Notice the capital theta there. So the Laplacian that we have above, uh, then when we plug this ansatz in for u, becomes something that maybe looks a little bit messier, but it's going to help us in the end. Um, the theta as a function of theta doesn't depend on r, so it comes out of the first term, and r doesn't depend on theta, so it can come out of the second term, which only has derivatives with respect to theta. Okay, so the sum of these two terms has to be equal to zero. Let's just do one simplification and divide this whole equation by r times theta, big R times big theta, so that we get for the first term 1 over r times these r derivatives, plus 1 over theta sine theta and then the theta derivatives of our capital theta function. And that must all equal to 0. So as usual in separation of variables, these are two functions, one function of r, one a function of theta, which when you add them must be 0, so they both must be constants. So I'm going to choose the first term to be positive k, and the next one be negative k. Why did I choose negative k for the second term? I could have chosen positive k. Um, at some level, it works. You could try doing it for positive k, and you'll find that you don't get anything that really makes any sense. OK, so uh, I'm taking that step for you and just telling you that this is what works. So then we have two ordinary differential equations from this Laplacian, from this partial differential equation that we started with, one involving only big R and 
little r is the only other one only involving big theta and little theta, like so. Let's rewrite these differential equations to make them a little bit easier to solve. So I'll multiply by theta on both sides and r on both sides of each equation, and then multiply out the derivatives using the product rule. So you get r squared r double prime plus 2r r prime minus k times r is equal to 0 for the r equation. And then I get theta double prime, again that's with respect to theta, plus cosine theta over sine theta theta prime plus k capital theta, and that's all equal to 0. Okay. So we need to solve these ordinary differential equations. And once we solve these ordinary differential equations, then we have a solution to our separation of variables problem. OK, so let's first solve the theta equation, because it turns out this is the more constraining one. So this is not entirely obvious, um, but it turns out that solutions to this equation have a couple properties. One, you only get solutions to this differential equation if the constant k is equal to l, l plus 1, where l is some integer. Okay. Again, that's not obvious. It just turns out to be true. The other uh, thing about this equation is that solutions are actually Legendre polynomials, p sub l of cosine of theta. So here we see these Legendre polynomials showing up again, in this case, for spherical coordinates. Uh, just to recall about Legendre polynomials, so p0 of cosine theta is just 1, p1 of cosine theta is just cosine theta. So P2 is cos of cosine theta is 1 half 3 cosine squared theta minus 1, and so on. So these Legendre polynomials are polynomials in cosine of theta. Okay, so we have a solution to the theta equation. Now we need a solution to the r equation. So let's just rewrite that here. r squared r double prime plus 2r r prime minus l l plus 1 r is equal to 0. The l, l plus 1 came because we said k must be equal to l, l plus 1. That's the same k in both equations, so we have to keep it here too. What are the solutions to this differential equation? Uh, well, I'm just going to tell you the solutions, and you can check them. So the solutions are r is equal to a, little r to the positive power l, plus b over r to the l plus 1. Again, just check this, and you'll see that these are indeed solutions. Okay, so that tells us what little r and big r, sorry, what uh, capital R and capital theta are. So we have then the total solution for u of r and theta, which is the product of these two. And so that's a r to the l plus b over r to the l plus 1 times our Legendre polynomials, p sub l of cosine theta. But note that this is true for any l. And so like we've done in other cases, we can take a sum of these solutions. The general solution is then the sum of solutions of this for any possible L. So summarizing the general solution to the Laplace equation in spherical coordinates is for u as a function of r and theta. It's a sum over L equals 0 to infinity, a sub L, little r to the L, plus b sub l over little r to the l plus 1 times p sub l of cosine theta are Legendre polynomials. And these a sub l's and b sub l's are some coefficients that we need to solve for, and they can depend on l. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll impose our boundary conditions and solve for these coefficients.